Welcome to another advanced game development tutorial. So today I'm going to show you a trick you don't know about that will improve the performance of your games, most of your games at least, and is easy to implement. That sounds like a scam, but it actually works and I will show you how. So in this scene there are 100 not moving asteroids and 100 spaceships that are flying around. And each spaceship has a very simple behavior. It searches for the closest asteroid to it and then it changes, changes the velocity based on uh, the direction to the closest asteroid. It doesn't accelerate, it doesn't slow down, it just uh, changes the velocity direction. And so what I'm displaying up there is um, not the time it takes for all spaceships to update, but just the time it takes to search for the closest asteroids. And um, 0 0.6 milliseconds is a lot in game development. Uh, one frame is about 16 and a half milliseconds. So uh, half a millisecond is already a big deal. And so why does it take so long? Well, we have 100 spaceships, we have 100 asteroids. And for each spaceship, we are checking 100 asteroids. So the total number of comparisons we do is 10,000, which is a lot. So as you know from the title, we can improve the performance by using Voronoi diagrams. I'm not sure how to correctly pronounce the name, but please deal with it for this video. So anyway, right now I'm not using Voronoi diagrams, but I will when I press this button and you see the performance gain you already have in the simple scene. So now instead of looking at 0.6 milliseconds, we are looking at 0.05 milliseconds. So we have a, a more than 10 times better performance than before. So to explain what I did, I need to first talk about Voronoi diagram. Well, you know what I mean. Um, but I first wanted to mention that this will not only work for Unity, it also works for Unreal, it works for Godot, it works another word, Godot and um, it will work for pretty much any engine. So this is the diagram we're talking about today. Uh, you can also say uh, it's a tessellation. And uh, you probably know it already, uh, most likely from shaders, uh, where it is sometimes used in stylized uh, water or similar things. Uh, or you know it from mesh fracturing uh, where you can use it as uh, a way to break apart pieces into smaller ones and so you can create destruction effects with it. Uh, but it has some other very unique properties and for that I will now explain what it actually is. So a Voronoi diagram is uniquely defined by uh, a set of points which are called the sides. You can see them here marked with, uh, with these uh, circles. And um, depending on your usage, it also limits them by a boundary, but it can also be unbounded. So then, how are these cells defined? Well, for each point in the plane, and we're talking mathematical, each point in the plane, a point is in the cell of a side if uh, it is the closest side to it, the point, in terms of the distance. It is better explained with an example. So this side here has this corresponding uh, outline boundary, the cell. And uh, this point here I'm pointing to with the mouse is in this cell because uh, the distance to the side, which is here, is the shortest compared to all other sides. And if you do this check, what is the closest side for each point in the plane, then the result is the Voronoi diagram. So if you now understood what the Voronoi diagram is, you might ask how does this help in any way? Because um, how is this different from a spaceship that is looking for the closest asteroid? In principle, there is no advantage because the calculation is the same. But what we can do is uh, not to find the closest asteroids for each point in the plane, but only for a limited set of points in the plane, uh, basically spread apart by a certain distance. And this allows us to create a lookup table. And how would this lookup table look like? Well, it would look very similar to the texture, 
The only difference is, is that we don't store the color information, but we store a pointer to the closest asteroid. And then all we have to do for each spaceship is to transform the coordinates of the spaceship into these texture coordinates and then simply use the pointer to find the closest asteroid. And so what we sacrifice for this performance gain is a little bit of precision because the texture has no infinite resolution and also memory space for the texture, for the lookup table. But once we have the lookup table, we completely remove the search for the closest asteroid. We just have to do a little bit of transformation of coordinates. I think you got the idea now. So you might say now, isn't it very expensive to create this lookup table? You have to basically calculate the texture. So first of all, if the objects are not moving, then you only need to calculate this table once. And yes, it is expensive, but also uh, it can be parallelized. And we have a device in uh, all of our PCs uh, that is very good at this, and that is the GPU. And so what we are going to do now, what I'm going to show you is how to write a compute shader that computes uh, this Voronoi lookup table. So there are multiple ways of calculating a Voronoi diagram in compute shaders and uh, one is uh, the jump flooding algorithm and the other one is to just brute force it. Uh, the first one needs a little bit of setup but it can be more efficient uh, with a lot of sites. And the second one, brute forcing, is essentially the same as uh, discussed. You just check for each uh, site what is the closest one. And uh, for this video we are going to uh, take a look at the second one because it is also easier to set up. So for those that don't know how to create a compute shader, you right click create. Then you look for shader and compute shader. So the first thing we are going to do is to rename the kernel from csmain to Boronoi. Then I am going to delete all the comments and the code. So now we can start and what I'm going to do is to use a structured buffer, not a texture. And the reason is so that we don't have to deal with uh, mip maps and other stuff. We just need an array. In fact, we need two arrays, one input array for the uh, sites, the asteroids, and one uh, output array for the table. So this is the input array and this is the output array. So I'm using integer 4 and float 4 um, because of padding reasons. Uh, apparently compute shaders are faster if you pad everything to 128 bits. We will now also need some additional parameters for where is the table in the world and how big is the table. Which is essentially how big is the texture. So I'm using these ones. Uh, you can use a float instead of an integer here. And the bounds are essentially just a rectangle where I store the, um, the minimal x and the maximum x in the x and the c component and the minimal y and the maximum y in the y and w component. And that information is all we need to start. And the first step is to um, transform the integer coordinates uh, of the id into a word position. And this is how you could do it. Uh, you first calculate how far along we are in the texture with the ID, which is another way of calculating the UVs. So percent %x is the same as UVx. And once you have the UV coordinates, you can calculate the world position by linear interpolating between the minimal x of the bounds and the maximum x of the bounds. And you do the same for the y component. And this will give you the world position. So now we need to loop through the array of sites, but for that we need to know how large this area actually is. It works a little bit different than to C sharp, but uh, all you have to do is to call get dimensions. This is how you create a loop in compute traders, and now what we want to do is for each site we want to uh, calculate the distance uh, between the world position and the site, and then see if it is uh, smaller than a minimum distance we have already found. So I start with a very large distance, there is sadly no uh, infinity, float.positive infinity in uh, compute shaders, but 10 to the power of 10 is large enough for uh, most cases in games. This is how you can calculate the distance to a site. You will first fetch the site position from the array, 
here you have to be a little bit careful uh, because different engines uh, use different coordinates. So in Unity the XY plane is the plane used for 2D games. But um, uh, you maybe want uh, different coordinates like X and Z. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful and you have to know in which plane you are working. Then you just calculate the direction, which is a normal calculation, uh, vector calculation. And for the distance I'm using the dot product and uh, this is not really the distance, this is the distance squared. For those that don't know, you uh, for distance comparisons you don't need to actually take the square root, you can just use the squared distance. All that is left is to check if the distance squared is smaller than the minimal distance we have already found. And if uh, that is the case, we assign uh, it the new minimal distance and then the closest side is the index we are currently in. Then we write the closest side we found to the output array and that is essentially all uh, for calculating this lookup table. Now that we have finished the compute shader, I just wanted to quickly show you how you can dispatch it. Uh, this is from asteroids and um, spaceships. And uh, it's a little bit of a longer code, but it's just boilerplate code essentially. And um, I also wanted to say that you can find the, a link to the project in the description. There is a GitHub link and you can find the complete code, including the shader there. But don't go away yet, because I still haven't showed you how you actually use this table. So um, here you see the profiler markers, these measured the 0.6 millisecond and the 0.05 milliseconds you saw at the beginning. And uh, you have this loop here uh, that loops through all asteroid positions and then finds the closest to the spaceship position. And in the second variant we just programmed when we have already calculated the table, we just need to transform the coordinates of the spaceship and uh, then we will get an index and then we can look up in the table at this index what is the closest asteroid and that is basically all you just have to look up the result the transformation of the coordinates is also not scary because we don't have a rotation we just have a rectangle that is uh, spanned in the world somewhere so this is the code for it it's just a few lines it is very fast now I wanted to talk a little bit more about the performance, but uh, first, please subscribe and also look at the links in the in the description. Uh, I do a lot of other things. I make games. I, I make asset store tools for Unity. Uh, different things. Performance. So first about the construction time. Uh, we use the GPU to construct the table, but uh, wouldn't it have been possible to construct the table somehow faster on the CPU? And uh, the answer is kind of no. You can construct the diagram faster, uh, you can get the polygons uh, in a faster time, but uh, even if you have the polygons of the diagram, uh, you still would have to need, you still need to uh, check if a point is in the polygon. So you still don't save too much time on this. And so uh, constructing the table on the GPU is the best way. You might also be wondering if there aren't other data structures that have a similar performance gain but are uh, easier to construct, faster to construct. Certainly there are data structures you can construct faster, quad trees, uh, cadet trees, etc. Uh, in terms of performance gain, um, they will never beat a Voronoi diagram because a Voronoi diagram is just a lookup table and so it is unbeatable in terms of algorithmic complexity. What quad trees and cadet trees can do is um, handle moving objects, which is very, very expensive with this kind of lookup table. Because if you imagine we move an asteroid around in the scene, then we would have to recalculate the whole diagram, which means we have to invoke, uh, we have to dispatch another compute shader. And uh, this can become very expensive calculating a texture each frame. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the trade-off we are making. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about how you can actually extend this technique and it's actually very exciting. So right now we are using points in 2D space with a regular distance measurement. Uh, so Euclidean distance. But actually, 
you don't need to use points, you can use any shape you want. Um, you also don't need to use the Euclidean distance metric, you can use any distance metric. And you also don't, you aren't restricted to 2D space, you can create 3D textures. Uh, there's no problem except the memory. So you can imagine calculating a 3D texture with triangles and the regular distance metric to uh, replace some of your raycasts in your scene. Because oftentimes you want to find the closest triangle to an object. And in this case, it would just be a lookup in the 3D texture. So for me, that is very exciting. You can do uh, lots of crazy stuff that can replace parts of the physics. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope you liked this video. I hope it will help you game, uh, make it more performant, maybe run on mobile or on Switch. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please leave a like. Please comment. All these things help the algorithm, I was told. And um, yeah, please also check out the description. I have tons of other stuff. So I have games, I have uh, tools for game development, and uh, with that, uh, goodbye.